Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be back with you again and on our, our adult Bible study here tonight. I'm so thankful for all of you that are able to tune in and to uh, check out what we got going here, what God is up to. Amen. We know that he's up to wonderful things. He's not changed, and he's still pouring out of his spirit upon all flesh, all that are hungry, all that are thirsty can receive from God. Amen. He's no respecter of persons. Praise God. Amen. I've got a subject I think is going to be uh, very, can be very impact and very important today. Amen. I want to turn to 1 John chapter 2. How about we go to prayer together? Let's ask God to, to speak into our lives. Let's open our hearts to what he would say and let him guide us in this lesson tonight. Let's talk to him. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your grace, for the power and presence of the Lord in our lives. Lord, we are grateful for the wisdom of your word directing our path today and bringing us, Lord, in the pathway you have ordained. That is the blessed way, God. That is the eternal life way. We love you, Jesus. We believe in you and thank you for speaking to all that will hear today. We open our hearts to you, God. Give me guidance, Lord, and direct the words we speak today. And be it for the good of all that are listening today. We love you and thank you, Lord. Give you glory and give you praise, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, your holy name, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, my Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm turning to 1 John chapter 2. And I'm going to start reading at verse 3. I'm going to do 3 through 6. And the word says, And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. I'm getting to my point here. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Also, so, um, or I'm sorry, hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Amen. But I am want, wanting to emphasize that verse 5, that it says that, and it, and it says by keeping his word, that we can know the love of God, that it can be perfected in us. First of all, that we can contact it and experience it and then have it living inside of us, a perfected love. Amen. That word perfected is in the King James here. It's uh, defined as to complete, to accomplish or finish or fulfill. Talking about the complete love of God, the fulfillment of the power of love in our lives. The, the God that is love, revealing into our lives his power. Amen. And we see a theme throughout the scriptures concerning this perfected love. And if we continue in 1 John 4 and 7, and I'm going to read some of that there. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Defining characteristic of our Creator and Savior is that He is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Here in His love, that we, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Listen to this. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Once again, I say there's a, this theme throughout the scriptures about this perfecting love, the perfect love of God, the complete love of God working in his people that has brought us to him and that has enlightened us and is recreating us and is teaching us to be like him. Amen. So as believers, we should be working toward walking in that perfect love of God. We need the love of God to be completed in all of us. And God, of course, is still working 
on all of us. It is his love that has brought us into a place of repentance, has brought us into an experience of his power, amen, has redeemed us and taken us up into his arms, even as a world would have rejected and has rejected so many of us. God receives us unto himself, amen. He picks up the pieces of our lives and makes it into something beautiful. It's because he loves us that these things happen today, amen. And I know concerning the condition of our society in the world today that there are many that are deeply wounded that are hurting they are in utter despair like Pilgrim's Progress calls it the dungeon of despair I've been in that dungeon before they feel alone and desperate they're looking for answers to the problems around us and not finding it anywhere in this world I'm telling you tonight, Jesus Christ is the answer to the woes of our world today. Hallelujah. The perfect love of God, amen, is what we are in need of. It doesn't focus on the sins that others have committed. The perfect love of God doesn't focus on race or skin color or nationality. The perfect love of God sees all races as equal, all people on common ground. doesn't matter if you are Jew or Gentile black or white, yellow or brown, male or female, bond or free. We are all equal before God. Amen. We are all equally lost without God. And we are all equally saved through Jesus Christ. Amen. You and I are all equally loved by our God. Hallelujah. Thank God there is a, a, a creator in heaven that became our Savior and has revealed the great love he has for humanity in a world that has lost its way and is cold and dark and hateful. People, as the uh, uh, Jesus said, what happened in these end times, betraying one another and hating one another. Amen. God is still the God of love. And he's a, he's a God who he said... The Bible says that he is no respecter of persons. That is, he doesn't show any partiality, and neither should we as well. Racial prejudice, bigotry, and discrimination are not consistent with the truth of the gospel. Those don't represent God's design for his church. For the apostolic church, and we should truly, boldly, and lovingly confront and universally denounce all of it as unrighteous living. I preached here for years that racism is sin. There is no question about it. The scriptures are replete with this truth. Amen. God stands contrary to judging people by appearance, amen, by skin color, or any other means that categorize people in general terms. Amen. We respect one another because we are all children of God. He made all the nations by one blood. We are truly all brothers and sisters in the flesh today. And God is making us brothers and sisters spiritually and eternally through the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to back to 1 John chapter 4. I'm going to start reading verse 16. It says, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. That's what we want. We want God to dwell in us. We want to dwell in God. It's the love of God dwelling in us. That is how he does it. Herein is our love made perfect. There it is again, the perfecting of the love of God. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Check this out. He said, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. That's what we need today, to drive out all fear. People living in fear today. The Bible goes on and says, Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. God wants this love to be perfected within us, and it will drive out all fear and all those things that are, are contrary to his will. It goes on, verse 19, We love him. Because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Listen to the boldness of his word. He says, for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Amen. And he is teaching us that because he, he showed us how to love when he died for us on Calvary. He demonstrated his love 
as we have said, many have said all through the years, it wasn't the nails that held Jesus to the cross, but it was his love for you and I. Amen. And his love teaches us not to fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but the love of God empowers us. He says he's given us power and love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. This is what the world needs today. They need to see a demonstration of the love of God. They need to see what God can do in a soul, no matter how uh, troubled they, want, they are or how in despair they may be. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so he drives out fear. We don't fear man. We don't fear this world. We don't run to the world to solve our problems. We run into the arms of Jesus. Justice will be served by God. It may not be today or tomorrow, but our God is a God of justice. He is a righteous judge, and the judge is coming. As they say, here come the judge. He's on his way. He will judge in righteousness. He will rule in righteousness. Hallelujah. And this is the blessed hope of the saint of God. Hallelujah. One day, everything is going to be made right. Every injustice shall be uh, uh, rectified. Hallelujah. Our God will make sure that things are made right. Hallelujah. But today he teaches us to walk in his love. Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all the soul and with all thy mind. He said, this is the first com and great commandment. And then he said, the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And upon these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. He has summarized for us the, the, this, this w person who was the law walking in flesh. He was the word of God made flesh. He summarized the law and the prophets in these two commands. To love God with everything that is in us and to love our neighbor. That is every human about us as ourselves. We are commanded to love. And we are commanded because it doesn't come naturally to the carnal nature to love. Amen. The carnal nature uh, it d dwells on and, and meditates on negative emotions. We allow those negative thoughts to abide in our minds and we get caught up in the hate and in vengeance and the spirit of this world. But the love of God, the Bible says, sh is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We that have received the Holy Ghost are are walking and have experienced the power of this love that he says he's wanting to be perfected on us. It's going to take the Holy Ghost to perfect the love of God in us. Hallelujah. The love of God shed abroad in our hearts. It's done so by the Holy Ghost. We have encountered true, perfect love, and we are learning to walk in that love. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost drives out. It helps us drive out of our hearts all prejudice and hatred and bitterness. If you're struggling with these negative emotions today, I want to encourage you to call upon the name of Jesus. He will give you peace in your heart. He will settle the turmoil and storm that may be raging in the hearts of people today. Hallelujah. He is our peace. And, and it's true. He is our only real peace that we can have is in him. Hallelujah. He says, my peace I give you. Not as this world gives. This world doesn't have peace. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. And be quite frank, the wicked are those that haven't repented. Amen. So this world, we're not going to find peace. But once we taste of the power of love, of the love of God, when he forgives us, we can't help but want to show that love to others. God puts his love in our hearts and causes it to burn like a fire inside of us. Amen. You want to know why? Because he feels. The Bible says he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. That means, yes, he does feel our pain, that he has empathy upon all humanity for the suffering that goes on in this world. Some people want to blame God for the suffering. He's trying to rectify it. He has made a way to rectify it. And when we call on the name of the Lord, the Bible is clear. He will deliver us, and he will work the spirit of love in us. Amen. And God has brought this church together. And calling us out of those negative human tendencies into loving one another, into the spirit of love. He is desiring to bring perfected love 
to live inside of us. Hallelujah. I'm glad we're in the hands of a mighty God that is able to bring beauty out of ashes in the midst of a troubled world that doesn't seem to have the answers. It doesn't have the answers, but he is the answer. Hallelujah. John 13, 34, he told the disciples and the church, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. That's what God wants to use to make uh, the church an example to a dark world. Amen. But some says, I won't go to church I, because I've been here at church. You know, I'm not that surprised because churches are made up of humans. Humans that are at every level of walk in God. We should have people at every level. If we don't, we're not a growing church. Amen. We are misfits, broken people that God is working on. We are all learning to walk in perfect love. But I promise you that you will be a whole lot more hurt in this world than you will ever be amongst believers. Amen. Some people say they won't go to church because they're going to be hurt or they've been hurt. Well, man, I've, I've been out there in this world. There's a whole lot more hurt out there in this world. You're going to be hurt in the bar. You're going to be hurt doing drugs and dealing with drug dealers. You're going to be hurt hanging out with thieves and adulterers, alcoholics and drug addicts. Most of my friends in this world betrayed me and stole from me and forsook me when my money ran out. You're going to have, you're going to have conflicts on the job. You're going to have them at the grocery store, at the gas station. Sure, there can be conflicts of personality in the church as anywhere else. But at least we're headed toward perfect love. At least God of love is working in us. He has brought us together. He has bound us together by love. Love is the cement that the, that the Holy Ghost is working amongst us to bind us together and make us one. This beautiful entity of a born-again church called out of this world, amen, being recreated by the power of God into something this world doesn't have and can get. Until they come to the light. Amen. But God wants them to have it. Wants everyone to have it. Hallelujah. And we know there's many scriptures. I'd like to share a few, though, that, that confirm this. First Thessalonians 4, 9, as touching brotherly love. It says, ye need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. We know God teaches his people to love one another. 1 Peter 1, 22, See, and you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Amen. Unfeigned, that is, it's not faked. It's real love. If you want to know real love, you've got to taste and see what Jesus Christ can do for you. You've got to walk in the Holy Ghost to know real love. Amen. World calls love all this illicit relations out here they call that love you don't know what love is till you know the love of christ amen and you can walk in that perfected love within us someone say yes this is the love that saints should have to one another but jesus didn't leave it there but he extends it to all that are in this world can we hear what the word of the lord says to us today on that great sermon on the mount in matthew 5 43 he said you have heard that it had been said thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy Listen to the words of our Savior. He said, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same, tax collectors, the, the most despised of the culture then? He says, don't they even already do that? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? He says, be ye therefore perfect, 
even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. He's talk about, talking about walking in the perfect love of God. Let the love of God be perfected in us. That's what the church is walking in today, and that's what the, the world needs. Amen. He wants his love to come to perfection in and through us. He'll make us love that, that those that hurt us. He make us have compassion on those that are lost and those that are working against us. Amen. Because we know that because, because the love of God is the only reason we're not just like them and still hurting out here in this world. But God has delivered us. God wants us delivered. Praise God. He wants us to do good to people, he said. People who we feel have used us and abused us. He says that we ought to do good to those people. Amen. The Bible says that the love of God will cover a multitude of sins. Amen. This is the key to everything God is doing today. This is how he has done it. This is how he has demonstrated it and continues to work in our lives. Praise God. Uh, there was a time when, when I was lost in this world 35 years ago. I had hate in my heart. I had bitterness in my heart. But the power of the Holy Ghost Amen. Been, been operating on me and purging me and healing me and straightening my mind out. Hallelujah. He gives us a sound mind. Hallelujah. Saints of God, don't miss out on what the Holy Ghost is trying to work in us. Praise God. Let it become the fullness of his will, the complete, perfected love of God demonstrated in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians 3.17 says that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you be rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge you don't get to know it by natural means you get to know it by the spirit he says that you may be filled with all the fullness of God all the fullness of God is obtained by knowing his love you can't claim to have the fullness of God and deny the power of love. The love of God is the fullness of God. That we, the church are called to be rooted and grounded in love. Amen. Praise God. But check this out in Galatians 5 and 13. Paul writes to us by the, by the, by the uh, Spirit of God. For brethren, you have, not been, or you have been called unto liberty, but use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh. But by love serve one another. Listen closely here. For the, all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This is right where our nation is today. We are biting and devouring one another. We are lashing out at those around us. Amen. If this continues, it won't be long till we are consumed of one another. Amen. That we will, will destroy this great republic that God has blessed us with. Amen. We've got to get back to the love of God. Let's strive to love everybody as Jesus Christ has loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. There is power in this great perfective love that God has granted unto his people. Now, don't misunderstand me today. Now, I, I I'm a realist. I do understand that these divisions and these hurts run deep. Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, can work his love in our hearts. His love will roll the clouds away, as an old good song used to sing. Amen. He causes us to love everybody fervently. It doesn't mean we excuse people's behavior. It doesn't mean we live with injustice. But we can still love one another, and we can pursue the unity of all mankind. Truly, the church should be on the forefront and take the lead in being an example to this world. Amen. I'm getting ready to close here, but think about this story that Jesus Christ told. The Bible called it a parable, and he said about, this is about those who trust in themselves, and they were righteous and despised others. He said two men went into the temple to pray. It was a Pharisee and a tax collector. And the Pharisee was highly respected in his days, but Jesus many times confronted them for their hypocrisy. And the Bible says that the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. I believe that phrase is very telling. To me, he's praying to himself. But he prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee. I'm not like other men are. 
extortioners, unjust, adulterers, racist, or even this tax collector. He says, I fast and I give tithes of what I possess. And the tax collector, he stood afar off, the Bible says, that he would not even so much as lift up his head or his eyes unto heaven. And the Bible says he smote his breast, Jesus said, and he said, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalts himself is going to be abased. But he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Hallelujah. The best thing we can do for ourselves, for those all around us, is to humble our hearts and repent and ask God to work this perfect love in us. Amen. He will take those broken pieces and he will take those wounds and those heartaches, those things that seem insurmountable and impossible to make right. I'm telling you, he's that miracle worker. If he can walk on the water, if he can raise the dead, he can heal broken hearts. He can remove the roots of bitterness in our hearts. He can heal the wounds of the past and restore us to a power of love that only the Holy Ghost can work in us. Hallelujah. Thank God for this great transforming power. I'm not talking about joining a church or joining a religion. I'm talking about experiencing the power of Jesus Christ when you repent of your sins and call on the Lord. Every one of us must repent to receive this great blessing. And he said, if we will obey his word, get baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, that we will be filled with the spirit of love. Hallelujah. And God wants his love shed abroad in all of our hearts. And he'll do so by the Holy Ghost. It's the greatest gift ever given to man. And I hope I can help everybody to know it and to taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Love you all so much. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I hope I've been a blessing. That's my desire to be a blessing to all. Hallelujah. And to help a world that's truly on a, on a course we know that is headed for destruction. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. He is that narrow path that leads unto eternal life. And it's the only one that can get us there. But he is available today, and you can call on his name and find him. I love you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in, church. I hope we can see you soon. Don't forget about all what we have coming up. We have adult Sunday school now begun at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, 11 o'clock for worship. Praise God. We have prayer meeting here every Monday night at 730. And we have these videos, of course, on, on Wednesday nights at 730. Uh, Fearless Youth Group and Hyphen as well has videos available on YouTube. Praise the Lord. Tune in if you can. Get part of what God's up to. Get a hold of perfect love and it'll change your life. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We'll talk to you. We'll see you soon. God bless.